now, certainly doing rubbing like we did in school with leaves or like using the fashion plates, I mean, that's just like a fun experience. But doing mm -hmm. something like this where you're going to these sites that, you know, just have an emotional component to them as well. Friends that have gone out, or even yourself, when they've done it, have they come back to you and said, like, just, you know, they're like, oh, I'll do this rubbing for you, whatever. But then going and actually doing it, being there, taking part of this process, do they have a reaction to that? Yeah, everyone has a story. Absolutely everyone has a story when it comes to their rubbings. Um, my friend Christy, she was doing a rubbing of James Dean's grave and ended up meeting James Dean's cousin who told her stories about what James was like as a child. Um, my friend Renee Rollo in New York, she has uh, she devotes like rubbing weekends where she'll run around and do rubbings. Recently there was a Frank O'Hara plaque and uh, she just did that and sent it to me. So yeah, that um, it's really an adventure. It's almost kind of like a scavenger hunt. A lot of these markers, they're not well documented. We might like we might know the intersection or the cemetery that someone lives in, that someone is, you know, the plaque resides in, but not necessarily where it's located. So it's a hunt and a search. My friend Clement in San Francisco, there was a Adrian Rich plaque that I really wanted, and it was an excerpt from one of her poems. And I kept telling Clement, I was like, you have to go, you have to do this. And he was, he, he couldn't find it. He knew the intersection, he knew it was outside of a subway stop and was walking around for 20 minutes and then felt really defeated and just, he hung his head low and then saw the plaque on the ground right there. That's yeah. Awesome. So everyone has a story and it's, it's also nice. It's a great way to honor the people uh, before us. There's, it's kind of meditative and to just kind of spend time with the black. Now, for for this, did you know about all these markers in these areas, or are people reaching out to you saying, oh, I'm from this area of the world, and there happens to be something here, would you be interested in this? Both. Primarily, though, it's been my research, which I did not expect. I thought uh, people would have a lot of suggestions, but generally we don't think about public commemorative markers. It's something that we encounter on a walk, wherever we're walking, mm -hmm. you know, but we don't think about it in terms of a gay context. So people aren't necessarily deeply in touch with the gay markers that they have in their city that they live in. Now, how, certainly you've got about like 150 rubbings right now. How has this project evolved from when you first initially conceived of the idea to now you're at 150? Has the project changed at all? Your perceptions of the project changed? Has it changed? Or is this pretty much what you envisioned from the start? Like this is, this, I can see this is going exactly the way I thought this was going. I'm happy to say that it is exactly the way I wanted it to go. I wanted it to be, I wanted exhibitions. I wanted the rubbings to be split, displayed all at once. And in doing so, you get to see who gets commemorated and who doesn't. And I do not like to edit the collection. So for instance, it's important to see that like, Wow, Tennessee Williams has a lot of rubbings. You know, what is it about Tennessee Williams that's safe for people to commemorate? Where there are other people who are completely omitted because they don't have public markers. And and so I think in doing so, it also tells something about our gay history. Mm -hmm. Now, for the exhibit, though, you've gone to different colleges. I mean, so you just wrapped up, you did the Loyal Marymount, you did that. Yeah. You did Appalachian State or North Carolina. So it's like, especially Loyola Marymount, just being a Catholic school, saying, oh, we'd like to do this, you know, this uh, ex exhibition of rubbings. What was that like? Yeah, and then Boone, North Carolina. So what was it like? It was it was really touching to, under, to, to realize that these institutions understand the importance of this project and, the, and that they are willing to back it and support it and help connect uh, their young students with it. So I, I loved being at both of those places. And, and that did surprise me, actually. I, it first um, debuted at the One Archives, their gallery space in West Hollywood. And that, that was amazing and magical, but each time it's been, um, like for instance, at a, at a Catholic university, like who would have thought, you know? <laughs> um, but they were great and the students asked wonderful, really thoughtful questions and really, it's in, you know, it's interactive. You, it's not something that you just walk past casually. There's a lot of text involved and people were reading and very considerate of it. Now, was the, this the case of the universities reaching out to you or did you like, well, I'd like to try to get it in different universities to showcase this and you reached out to these various universities? Both, is, both, both things are happening right now. Yeah, it's going to be at Webster University in St. Louis at the end of August. 
and I'm happy about that. That's because it's actually where I grew up, was St. Louis, so it's kind of nice about, um, you know, that I'd gone back to St. Louis to do rubbings, and now those rubbings are going to be displayed at the university there. <laughs>